Neo2 offers countless ways of approaching and tackling its challenges, and while this can be both fun and freeing, it unfortunately also leads many players to never actually learn the game's core fundamentals, so they emerge with some rather interesting views towards the game's mechanics and difficulty. So, this video will go over the basics, principles and strategies that work regardless of your specific build, weapon choice, stats, or equipment scaling. At the center of Neo's combat system is the concept of whiff punishment. Whiff refers to an attack that fails to connect against its intended target. Punishment refers to the whole slashy, stabby thing that the game clearly wants you to employ. While you can be aggressive, the most reliable approach to taking down enemies is to weave in and out of range, goading them into attacking, at which point you dodge and then punish. Dodging in Neo does, in fact, provide iframes, meaning that you are invincible and immune to enemy attacks during the early portion of your dodge animation. One common faux pas is that some players intuitively want to dodge away from enemy attacks, when it is often better to dodge into attacks, reducing your exposure to enemy attacks' as active frames, and keeping you closer to the enemy, affording you far better punish opportunities. This is perhaps most obvious when it comes to the Karasu Tengu, the bane of many new players. The Tengu has attacks with incredibly long reach, high damage, and sap a large amount of ki on guard. But to anyone who realizes that dodging left neutralizes these attacks outright and regularly provides punish opportunities, the Karazu Tengu are hardly a threat at all. It should be noted that high stance will give you a different dodge animation than mid and low stance. The high stance dodge has more iframes, making it useful for dodging certain tricky attacks with odd timing or large amounts of active frames. However, it is also notably slower, has a significant recovery window, a long travel distance, and consumes more key to perform. Thus, I recommend limiting your use of this move and encourage getting comfortable with the standard dodge found in mid and low stance. Once you've figured out how to lure an enemy and dodge their attacks, you'll have to consider what punish attack you wish to retaliate with. There are hundreds of options here, and the best ones will depend on the enemy you're fighting, the attack they whiffed, how much key they have, what weapon you're using, what skills you have equipped, and many other factors. But to keep things simple, every weapon has six basic attack strings, and while the properties of these strings vary, there are some commonalities among them, and being acquainted with these features is important. Mid-stance is the most versatile, offering a good balance between range, damage, and speed. Light attacks from this stance generally strike in a horizontal motion, and are excellent for reliably catching enemies that like to circle or sidestep you. Most mid-light strings are also able to lead into an optional string ender skill, designed to cause increased key damage to the enemy in place of normal damage. Depleting a human enemy's key opens them up to grapples, whereas depleting a yokai's key causes them to stagger upon each hit. Measuring and balancing your key and your opponent's key is crucial, and more pertinent than your respective health bars. Mid-stance strong attacks are a bit less consistent, and generally emphasize forward momentum. They have their uses, but are generally eclipsed in function by other strings or skills. High stance focuses on slower vertical hits that inflict heavy damage, allowing excellent punishes against attacks with long recoveries. The vertical hitboxes make high stance hits uniquely adept at shattering enemy weak points, the glowing yellow areas on yokai enemies. Breaking enemy weak points will cause a stagger and a permanent handicap to their key bar. Because of this, it's often wise to use high stance attacks early in the fight and switch to faster attacks after they've been weakened. High stance heavy attacks are often a single heavy strike with a good amount of travel distance. High stance light attacks sacrifice some of this range in favor of increased speed and multi-hit strings. Low stance sacrifices damage and staggers for speed and key conservation. The quick strikes of this stance make it ideal for applying weapon-coded debuffs, such as elemental conditions or poison. Low stance attacks generally have hitboxes that touch low to the ground, and excel at hitting small enemies and ankle biters, such as baby spiders or mini gaki. Knowing this, don't limit yourself to a single stance. Practice switching stances mid-fight, and even mid-combo. Many players struggle to properly manage their key, an issue that is made dramatically less oppressive with proper application of the flex skill in the samurai skill tree, which rewards extra key regeneration by switching stances during a key pulse. Personally, I also suggest securing the three running water skills as early as possible, which enable the player to key pulse by dodging, thereby allowing you to quickly disengage an enemy after punishing them without draining all of your remaining key. Anyway, that's about it. Simple, right? These basic fundamentals will carry you through about 95% of the game's content, including its higher difficulties. Happy hunting!